take a quick look at working with the envelope tool and envelope effects in Corel Draw Graphics Suite X4, actually Corel Draw X4. And this effect is available in X3, 12, etc. Changes a little bit as to how it works through different versions. A couple of different ways to get to this effect, and we'll take a look at some of the different things we can do with it in this particular session. Obviously, we have an, an envelope docker. If we go to effects and envelope, that'll bring up a docker, or we can get to that through window and dockers and envelope. And that particular docker is right over here. Now, if we're working with a docker, we have to approach it a little bit differently than the interactive envelope tool. And there is a third way to get to this, and this is over here in the toolbar, and it's your interactive envelope tool. And 90% of the time I'm working with envelopes, I'll go to this tool by default. But we're going to take a look at working with the docker also. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this. I'm going to zoom out and then zoom in here by the word envelope. I'm going to go over to my toolbar, and I'm going to grab from my toolbox the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to create a rectangle, as you can see here. I'm going to go to my shape tool, one beneath the picker, convert this to curves. Right-click on this line and convert that to a curve. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this other line here, convert that to a curve, and we'll just create a simple arch effect here using the text envelope. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and left-click here to open my envelope docker. And I'll go to the eyedropper tool here, and I'll go ahead and select Create From. And because I had my arch selected and not my text, I'm not going to be able to do this correctly. So I want to click off, select No, and I actually want to click on my envelope here. Then come and click on my arch. Now you can see the blue lines have been copied from the arch shape to create this arch shape. And all I need to do is come over and click on apply and I'll have that effect applied to that text or that object in Corel Draw. Now once that's applied you'll notice that if I've got these node type handles in the corners and then these dotted blue lines. Now if I click on one of these nodes or one of these lines we'll watch our properties bar change up here at the top. And I'm going to bring this down here so that we can see this. And you can see that I've got the curve connector set up here but I want to go to my pick tool my shape tool, excuse me, that I have here. And actually, you'll notice even when I click on that, it stays on my envelope tool. Sometimes we get our selections not quite right here, and we have to go ahead and change what we got selected. But Now you can see that I've got this interactive envelope tool property bar, and you can see that these nodes have properties that are very similar to that of when you're dealing with vector objects. So actually what we've got is we've got a vector object that's an envelope, and we can edit that just like we can edit our vector objects. If I click on this line and come up into my properties bar and click on convert curve to line, you'll see that that changes that to a line. I'm going to hit control Z because I can get to this more quickly than going up into the properties bar. I can right click on this also and select to line and that will convert that to a line. If I want to change the shape some more, I could double click just like a vector object with my shape tool. Double click here, create a node, come up here or right click and select convert to cusp, pull this down, then come over to these control handles, pull this up and start to change the shape of this even more. So I can customize my shapes working with the envelopes and really do some really crazy effects with this tool on text and many other objects. And I'll show you some other things here in just a minute. So now that we know we can apply this to the docker, let's take a look at working with the interactive envelope tool and I'll work with some shapes here. Let's say I've got this wing here, but I'm not happy with the shape of the wing. I'm going to right-click on this. It is converted to curves. Let's say I'm not happy with the way the, the shape of this wing is set up going off of this skull. And actually, I want to select this wing and right-click and select order and go to front of page here. Now, let's say that the shape of this wing, and I'm going to go ahead and distort this, really isn't quite right for this graphic here. And I want to change the shape of it a little bit. And let's say just by moving my object with the bounding box handles in Corel isn't going to work, so I need to do some work with my envelope. I can click on my envelope and I can start to change the shape of this graphic pretty radically, as you can see here, by going ahead and changing the shape with my envelope tool. Now I use this a lot of times if I have to take something that has a curve or an arch in it and I want to straighten it out, I can use the envelope tool for that as opposed to recreating it, things like that. But there are a couple of settings I want to get into here which are your constraints and the mode of your constraint. And we'll take a look at that working with the envelope tool and we'll use this cross to do that. And I'll just go ahead and zoom in here on the cross. 
and it will go to our envelope tool and we'll apply an envelope here. Now when I first apply an envelope here, if I left click on this node and drag it and move it around, you see there's no constraint going on. If I hit Control Z and if I grab this node and hold down my Shift key, nothing happens. However, if I Control Z back, and I just went back too far, and I come up here to my constraint, and I click on Envelope Single Arc, arc Mode, and I click on Envelope Unconstrained Mode here, and I click this node and hold down my Shift key. Now, i got to click this the right way here. i got to hit Control Z. Sometimes I get, okay, now we should be set and make sure we've got that clicked. Now I'm going to hold down shift and you'll notice that now my envelope is expanding proportionally on the left and right sides at the bottom. So I can use the envelope tool to create perspective effects but perspective effects that are warped or have a curve type look to them as opposed to working with your standard per 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 perspective effects tool that only gives you linear perspective. You can create perspective changes and effects with the envelope tool that are curved and constrained. So you're going to get an equal amount on both ends of the graphic. It'll be an equal effect to the left and the right. Now you'll notice that with this on, if I just left click and pull this, I get one side. If I hit control, I'll start pulling it all in the same direction. So we can apply some very unique perspective effects with this. If I want an arched perspective effect of this cross to the left and the right, let's say I was applying it to something and then duplicate this and then I go ahead and mirror horizontally. Now you can see I've got that going in two directions and I could go ahead and work on this and apply it to a design. So we want to be aware of these constraints. We really want to be aware of our vector objects and how they work and you can see with that constraint on it's moving everything. But if I come up here turn that off and then select that node and start to move it I get a different type of effect. I have more control over the individual lines and nodes and nothing is constrained. Now, let's take a look at adding some envelope to apply text to a banner. I'm going to go ahead and type in the word art app. And actually what I'll do is I'll go with free art again. Free A-R-T. And I'll go ahead and change this font to Portaculon again. I'll go ahead and tuck this back up in here. And I want to get my pick tool and change that font again. If you try to change the font when you've got the text tool selected, it won't work. I'm going to bring this font free art over here and we'll put that right in there and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and we'll apply this font or this text into this banner with the envelope tool. Go ahead and click on that. Now I've got two nodes here. I want to get rid of these because I want straight edges here. I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'll lasso these two nodes. Now you can see I'm having an issue because I've got objects selected while I'm trying to lasso. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select this node and hold down my shift key, select this node and this node and then we'll start to move these. Now see I'm in constrained mode up here I didn't turn that off, I want to turn that off and now I'll be able to hold down my shift and select multiple nodes because that constraint was on and we'll bring this right up here about where it should be. Now you can see that the way this is setting up this free art I can move these nodes around but I want to be aware of the fact that I'm dealing with what is basically a vector object and I've got too many nodes here so what I want to do I want to lasso these two nodes in the middle, left click, hold down, drag that marching ant bounding box around those two nodes and hit my delete key. Now that changed my shape, but I can go ahead and left click on this line and bring this right down into here. And we'll do the same here and our shape of our text inside of our envelope will be formed to go inside of our banner. Now these two nodes here, I want to change these to lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this, lasso this node over here and delete that. And I'm going to right click on this segment and select two line and then I can bring this note over and make this text kind of line up with the shape of the flow of the banner then I can grab this control arm down here left click and pull that down and now my free art is flowing with the shape of my banner and I'll left excuse me right click here and change that to a line and now it's flowing freely inside of this envelope now I could have created a vector object and applied it the other way or I could go ahead and apply it just by applying the effect interactively with the interactive envelope tool. But that's how we work with our envelope tool. And go ahead and experiment with this a little bit. After maybe 20 or 30 minutes of experimenting, you should have this tool down. And remember to keep your thoughts about that constrainment mode. If you're having problems with the shaping, then check your constrainment mode up here with the envelope tool.